a nation that over the years has caused more than the odd upset in the World Cup. Here's the lag. Remember, it's the the cue ball closest to that back cushion Switzerland that determines who gets to break off in the first rack. And it's Switzerland who win it. So Fedor Gorsh, the world champion on the left. Sergei Lutzka on the right. Lutzka said yesterday, he's the aggressive one. Fedor is the tactician. I think he's a little more than a tactician. I think he's a phenomenal all-round player who's had the experience of playing in the Moscone Cup to back him up in this team format. So Team Switzerland get the first wrap underway. The ball disappears. And this is Dimitri Jungo, very, very, very class pool player. Tipped to be one of the greatest a few years ago when he was a, a junior and kind of chose a different path in life. But all European pool players know how good Dimitri is. A pretty good team, Team Switzerland. So he's tried to duck behind the blue two, and I think he's overhit that. I'm still coming to terms, Carl, with Slovakia's win over Austria. We know in this tournament. Extension, please. It's a, a breeding ground for upsets. It has been since it started in 2006, but 7-1, that was what really caught my eye. Yeah, they really was flawless in that match. It's all right saying, you know, it's short races and winner breaks, but the players have still got to go out there and deliver, and deliver they did. They see Fedor Gorsh, current world nine ball champion, taking on the first shot with a Tricky up off the rail. Interested to see how his partner handles the situation. said yesterday they won't talk an awful lot but they will talk when necessary Just off straight, so he needs to carry this on the spin to get the cue ball down table, and that's perfect. Perfect position, almost unimaginable. He'll miss this. Russia. What's the first and one? so the Swiss missed Nothing getting the snooker. The Russians did the rest. 1 0 efficiently. You know, Carl, you talked about Fedor Gorsh winning the, the World Nine Ball Tour Championship. It really was a phenomenal feat for him and also for Russian pool in general. took place 
late in 2019 at the Al Arabi Sports Club in Doha in Qatar. And he came through some really hard battles. Last 16, he beat Matthias Schnigotsky 11-10. Then Ko Pinyi from Chinese Taipei 11-6 in the semi-finals. Ko's brother, Ko Ping Chung, 11-7. And then finally, another Taiwanese player, Chang Zhonglin, 13-11 to capture the title. What a feather in his cap. Yeah, there's some serious pool players in that list you've just named, Phil. And the fact is, he's still only 20. The world of pool, at least, at his feet. I suppose, you know, for Sergei Lutzka, who we saw there, it's a big responsibility being the partner of such a star. But I get the impression that these two could go deep. Cue ball Holland. looked like it was going to go in the bottom right, and then the centre, and it ended up in the top left. So, now does the blue two pass the pink four? This shot will tell us. Oops, I do believe it does. Even if it doesn't go in the centre of the pocket, often you see pool players use the rail. So I'll just be trying to play this two into the rail, but not that far up and not that hard. If you watch the guys out on the practice table, and obviously they're trying to pot a large number of balls in succession, the amount of times balls refuse to drop. These pockets, for nine ball tables, Carl, they aren't very forgiving, are they? So he wanted to, to avoid the cannon on the purple five. But as it happens, I think he looks in pretty good shape for the bank into the side pocket. Good shot. See a nice view of the Federal Ghost Q action. Very nice, compact, very solid. Mm. He has to do what he's done at the age of 20. Underlines the fact that he's got good technique. He's very dedicated, and he's so focused. Those characters call where he expects to win 
doesn't hope to win, he expects to. Yeah, for such a, a young man, he's got a lot of experience. Russia take Second rack break. two. Russia. And it's 2 0. Yeah, and that's very ominous for the Swiss. Not just the fact they've won the first two racks, but how they've won them. That said, though, Ronald Reggie on the, on the left there, and Dimitri Jungo from Switzerland. They have completed shocks in the past. We were talking about them this afternoon, before Austria lost to Slovakia. The last time a defending champion had gone out in the first round was because of the Swiss. The same pairing as this in 2011 over in Quezon City in the Philippines. Switzerland there beat the defending champions of 2011. China, 8-4. Fu Bo and Li He Wen. Under the lights, under the pressure. They've done it before. They've beaten the Philippines also in a, a World Cup past. But here, already, feeling the pinch. By the way, this event is being played behind closed doors, although players and their guests are allowed into the arena, assuming, of course, masks are worn, as you can see in the background there. We're all in a COVID-secure bubble here. And the fact that such an international competition has been put together, testament to the hard work of Matri Multisport. Crunch the break there. He's made three balls. So he does have a shot on this red three. He's just got to spin the cue ball round and get back to this pink four. If the angle's not there, yeah, it must be there because of the way he's queuing. He's not sure, is he? Is it a miss or did he play the bump? I'm not so sure, but it's worked out well. Game pool, Dimitri Jungo played a poor safe in the first rack. And then he tried to cheat the pocket on a two ball and left it in the jaws. And now Russia have got these three remaining balls to take a nice lead. Stroked him with total authority, as you would expect from a world champion. It's all very efficient from the Russians thus far. All of the racks have gone to them.
Russia have rushed into a 3-0 lead over Switzerland. Fedor Gorscht looking the part, looking the world champion that he is. Thanks, guys. Take four, break. Russia's leading 3-0 with we'll break. Sergei Lutzka said he was proud and privileged to be the partner of Gorscht. But he won't be proud of that. like this and they've been split everywhere players of this quality really should fancy clearing up Dimitri's already missed two ball, but this time he's managed to pot it so just needs to settle his nerves a little bit These are the racks that simply have to go. I ended up bumping into the six there. I don't think he meant to do that, but it's actually turned out pretty tasty. Decided to draw below the eight there to guarantee the right angle. So even though the cue ball is on the top rail, the main thing he's got the correct angle. So he's just got to pop this ball. Cue ball rolls down the table naturally. too straight can he pinch a little bit of the pocket here yeah easy done Just what they needed. But that's just what the Russians needed. What a blunder from Ronald Regley. Check a chocolate, please. Chocolate. Cheers. Extension, please. Cold boys are sitting here to my right hand side. Mouth wide open. He can't quite believe what he saw. It wasn't even one of those that rattled in the jaws. He missed it by a mile. Yeah, I was kind of like just focusing on the next rack and then just shows you it is never over. Mm. 
but Russia. for Western. Fedor Gorscht, it is center cut right into the pocket without touching the sides. Now, that really will hurt the Swiss partnership. Russia lead 4 0, and for Ronald Regley, what a mistake to make. So, Cole, why? Well, just take your eye off the shot, thinking you've you've done it, maybe in decision. I don't know. It is a funny old game. Well, the initials RR also stand for rest and recuperation. He might need some of that right now, but he's got no opportunity because he's got to be put back into the fray straight away. He's just in disbelief, isn't he? Laughing as if, you know, what have I just done there, he's thinking. Well, they say, don't they, in Scotch doubles, that you should never say sorry. But if there's an instance to say sorry, that would surely be it. There's Dimitri trying to look cool, but inside was thinking, how did he miss it? Leaving my yeah, and this man at the table did what all great champions do. He just stroked a tricky nine ball in the heart of the pocket to lead 4-0. He's breaking in the fifth. And breaking well. The one's in. Shot on the two is available. The three's wide open. Yeah, just spotted the pink four and the five. Look like they're tied up, so it might be worth trying to go two rails and just flick into them. Let's see what they come up with. Problem pretty much solved. Of course, by doing that, position on the three was largely sacrificed. Extension, please. Still thinking about that awful nine ball. But old ghost, world nine ball champion, coming up with the goods. Nice bank shot. Played it at a lovely pace too to get the cue ball back out into the centre of the table. I think the uniforms of the Russians, Carl, are very appropriate. Nothing flashy whatsoever. And that's the way they approach the game. Nothing flashy, but deadly. fancy and jazzy shirts in the the event the players try and make an effort almost looks like Russia forgot theirs and 
went to the local shop. Now this could be a tester. Should get it, but the hesitation suggests he's a little concerned. I had no faith. Yeah, he's doing a pretty good job so far, he's Lutzka. Russia. What's that the rack? Just gives them even more of a healthy lead. This is worrying times for Team Switzerland. Mistake after mistake. Usually a very good team as well, but it's just not happening at the moment. You're right about Dimitri Jungo, though, the, the player there on the right-hand side. When he was a, a youngster, what a future seemed to be ahead of him. He won the World Junior title in 2000 in Quebec, Canada. And that same year, remember, only 17 years of age, he won on the ultra-competitive Euro Tour. Actually, in 2007, Dimitri Jungo and his partner, Marco Schudi, reached the quarter-finals for Switzerland in this tournament. And in 2008, he individually reached the quarter-finals of the, the World Nine Ball Championship, losing out in the end to Marcus Schumann, the Swede, who has subsequently gone on to be the Moscone Cup captain. Another victory for him, 2009 World Pool European Pool Championship in straight pool. As for these two, well, if it came down to determination and desire. They take all the stopping. Is it? Yeah, yeah, because you were taking a cube on there. Okay. D6 break. Russia to break. Leading final. So he's had a couple of breaks and a couple of scratches. Can he keep the cue ball on the table? Did his best. And that's not too bad. Now he's having a little chuckle to himself. <coughs> this is the fourth match of the day. Two of the three this afternoon were one-sided, and right now, this one is entirely one-sided. He knew, though, he knew that cue ball was travelling on, and Sergei Lutzka is in a snooker. Yeah, it just kept rolling, Pardon. didn't it? I thought it was going to pull up easy, but it just didn't want to stop. <coughs> so he's got the jump cue, he's going airborne. He keeps looking at the pink four, so I do believe he's trying to play a jump combination. Needs to be careful with the cue ball, that will be flying around the table. And it's no good, and I think Switzerland have got a little chance here. Mm, very straight on that red three ball, though. Yeah, and cue ball and multi ball very close. So getting close to the 
the pink four will be really difficult. And after missing that nine ball, the last thing Ronald Regley wants is a really tough ball. If Youngo tries too much positionally, well, errors could be made with this shot. Yeah, that was a smart shot, that. Just leave your partner distance, make sure he's got a shot at the ball. And now, it's all about staying still on this and just making sure you pop the ball. And he'll have a few demons going on in his head after that horror nine ball he missed. into the, the purple five he's not got the position he wanted but it does pass the eight ball it's not coming easy at the moment for Switzerland so easy this to avoid the eight and overcut and that's exactly what he's done At least now the eight is the blocking ball. to swerve it round the eight and just didn't quite get enough swerve on it. And now you see the ball stay up. Was it easy? I think he believed it would drop in, Carl, but it just stayed there on the lip. Yeah, these rasson tables, the slate in the top is so deep, it just, you know... A few years ago, it used to just fall in if it got near the pocket. Now they've made the slate go a lot deeper, so the ball will hang. Still not happy, Dimitri, but... I mean, you've just got to be delighted you're at the table. And he's tried to roll this. That's fine. It's always a little bit scary. Surely they're going to get on the board. It's Regley is going to have to pop the nine ball, but where he's left Youngo on the eight, I can't imagine he's going to miss this one. Well, if he misses this, this question's going to be raised in the house. Switzerland wants the rack. Switzerland off the mark. Finally, Ronald Regley pots that nine ball, gives them their first rack, but look at this scoreboard very much in favour of Russia.
This is the shot that cost the Russians rack six. Still can't believe it didn't fall, Carl. Yeah, incredible. But it's all going well for Russia. Thanks. Impressed with his partner, the young kid. Just having Frank. He's so doing it's very well, Lutska. Trying him by five racks to one. Russia have produced some great players over the years, the likes of Ruslan Shinahov. I'm sure he's watching this match fall somewhere. Well, a lot of balls have disappeared there. He's that red feet to hold up. Can he see the potting angle? Younger gave that a good old-fashioned smack, didn't he? First glance, I thought he'd missed that, but he swallowed it in as the pocket, so... You know, they've had the chances in this match. Just got to try and stay positive if win the breaks. We've already seen Slovakia put a four pack on the defending champions. You're still in shock about that, aren't you, Phil? I am. Not the, the fact that Austria lost, because I think anyone can beat anyone in this format. But it was the, the size of the Slovakians' victory. And that's why I'm not writing off the Swiss yet. With the winner breaks rule, sustained the comebacks are possible. Switzerland wins the break. So it was 5 0, now it's 5 2. The Swiss have genuine hope. So if Switzerland can pull off an almighty comeback, then we go through to the last 16 to take on Japan. Japan this afternoon beating Croatia 7-1 in our very first contest. And this is all in the top half of the draw. The one match in the last 16 we know for certain is Slovakia against the Czech Republic. Oh, it's going to be one very interesting World Cup this time. Yeah, unfortunately for COVID reasons, China and Taiwan can't play. Obviously, two of the the biggest hitting teams over you know the years in the World Cup of pool event. And with Austria bowing out, it's kind of lending itself for uh, you know one of the the teams that we might class as underdogs if that's a fair statement to step up and get the trophy for the first time. The ball's being re-racked by a very familiar figure in Q Sports, well known pool and snooker yeah. referee. Marcel Eckhart. Switzerland to break. Training by five flex to two. Only takes a couple of break and runs to get yourself right back in this match. But you need a ball on the break. And the last ball falls in, so that's pretty useful. And I think the two ball is jammed right on top of the nine ball. So I don't believe that pops in any pocket. Because he does have a shot at the one ball, but where do you put the cue ball?
just looking at that gap in between the purple and the green ball. Interested spectators there. One of the favourites, the Philippines, Roberto Gomez and Jeffrey De Luna. De Luna on the left, Gomez on the right. They seem very up for it in the interviews yesterday, I heard. So many great players to choose from the Filipinos. Extension, please. And they were the inaugural winners, of course, of this tournament in 2006. Yeah, the Philippines produced <laughs> some of the best pool players we've ever seen. Great Efren Bata Reyes, Francisco Bustamante. Ren Ronnie Alcano, former World Nine Ball champion. And all three of those mentioned would fancy running out from here. Dennis Orcolo. The list goes on. Extension, please. Tricky little shot coming up here because he can pop the two ball, which is over this pocket. But the next ball is the pink four next to it. And it's that thin, I don't think he can stop the cue ball. So he's going to try and go all the way up the table and all the way back down. It's turned into a little bit of a of, of a big rack this one because of course if Russia win they're on the hill and you would think they would then go on to win the match. But if Switzerland win, it's all of a sudden five three from five zero and he's caught the middle jaw. And the cue balls ended up landing behind the line. Yes, when you catch the bump like that, normally it doesn't end kindly. Well, if that cue ball is nestled into the purple five and he can't get through to the four, what a result that would be. It's not nestled. As you can see, there is daylight between them. see the potting angle I think he can yes he can so he's just going to play a little stun shot off the bottom rail playing for the purple five in the opposite center that doesn't look too bad it's a battle of the mind is pool you're five zero up 10 15 minutes later it can be five three five four and just start going through the motions. Use this cue ball to travel. Yeah, that's perfect. Nice shot from Ronaldo. What the pool players these days using the carbon fibre shafts. Traditionally, they were all made out of wood, but the modern era of pool seems to have gone to the carbon fibres. Many, many years ago, they used to say if you walked into a, a pool hall and you had a, a carbon shaft, you weren't a very good pool player, Phil. Well, now this rack looks like a carbon copy of the previous two. Make no mistake, this Swiss comeback is on. Remember, Russia led 5-0. Now that advantage has been trimmed 
to only 5-3. The youngsters looking a little concerned. Yeah, you can just see the body language there. It just changes. It's, it's incredible. You see the great Joshua Fully in the background, just above Dimitri's head there with his wide tear fill. Also a very good pool player herself. What a wonderful arena. So the players in there, Carl, they're obviously watching how the table plays for the matches they're going to be involved in. Can they get more from being actually in the arena than watching it on the TV monitor outside? I think certainly the speed of the table. If you're out there and you can physically see um, how a player's hit a shot, you would get a better gauge of, let's say, if you're watching it on your TV. So, Plus also... You know, there's two practice tables, there's not much else you can do, we're not Big allowed out of the bubble. So you know, so watch a, break. a bit of pool. There you see. Training by five of the teams, team Finland, Petri Mackinen there. He's of course won this tournament before with Mika Immanen. He's a new partner this year. He's playing with Kasper Matakainen. We've seen him at the Predator Championship League pool just a few weeks ago. In went the one. And the two is in the open, although clearly not ideal. Yeah, there's a lot of options for a good safety shot out there. You can see all the balls in the middle of the table. That offers good insurance for the cue ball. Yeah. This was one of the big things I used to love about playing pool when, you know, you could, you often see it, don't you, where you get off to a good lead and you relax and sometimes you win a match easy. And then other times you find yourself losing heavily and you have to battle it out. And, I often found that it was a lot better if you'd come back from Extension, please. a big deficit and won the match. It made you feel made you feel more alive. And big discussions going on here in this rack. They know how important this one is. Lots of discussion here. Dangerous shot because he's not got the two ball in a safe position. I do believe he was trying to put it kind of behind the pink four ball. Now, Fedogorst, he's known as maybe the best jump cue player in the world. But he's swapped back to the playing cue, so we won't see it just yet. Extension, please. Yeah, maybe the green six was just in his way, so he's kicking two rails. If he hits this pretty full, good things can happen. Good things can happen. He's played that. to perfection, the world nine ball champion. Putting on a kick in clinic. Wasn't this classy? <laughs> and individually gorged knows how to stave off a fight back when he won the European nine ball in 2019 in Treviso in Italy. In the final, he was 8-4 up against Joshua Fuller. Fuller came back to 8-8. Eight, eight. Hill Foul Hill. Shot. Bad it. Gorged one Ball decider. Take the shot, please. Start the clock, please. So tell us, Carl, what happened there? 
Yeah, it was just so hard to hit the blue two. He was trying to push the pink four down towards the red three ball and tie it up, but he under hit that by a lot, so he didn't tie it up, and now... They give up ball in hand purposely, and now is this a little bit easier? Yeah, not Bad easy, it. just trying to push that to the side rail. What's the yeah, trick? Yeah. Within two. Huh? Within two. And so, obviously, to pool aficionados, they know this, but to the casual viewer, deliberate foul shots are allowed. Yeah, and you're going to see another one because he just can't foul shot. find a good hit. Second shot. If he'd have missed it Ballin. that time, he would have run the table. Mind you, just but now they're on two fouls. And of course, on the three please. foul rule. Don't see that often, do we? And the three foul rule means that if you do commit three fouls in a rack, the rack is gone. It goes on the other side of the ledger. Yeah, all he's done by tying the purple five up is just, just give him a little bit more time. Just to make the run out a little bit more difficult. Mind you, you're on two fouls. If you have come into foul on this shot, you're gonna lose the wreck. Marcel Lecomte, the referee, just reminding, as if they needed reminding the Swiss, that if they commit another foul, it's loss of rack. to miss the six and he did miss it now very difficult to see is if the seven over the pocket can he play a, a combo i think looking at the overhead he can play the he can actually play the four into the pocket but is that five ball what's causing a few issues all depends on what angle he's got here to be fair He played it hard, so after the ball hit the jaw, it went in off the seven. But the problem with that is the seven come back and stop the cue ball. Now, will he play safe? Yeah, he's playing safe. He's going to put the purple five on the bottom of the centre of the rail. And he's a cue ball to bounce, so, so it's Timothy, a mistake. Timothy, Timothy, please. Keeps forgetting his chalk. Can we? Yeah. Can we restart the clock, please? Let me tell you, Carl, nothing will get past Marcel Eckhart. He's very efficient. Very on it. Yeah, Dimitri Ungo keeps forgetting his chalk, and Marcel keeps reminding him. No, I think he's going full blood for the bank shot in the top left. And of course, he plays safe just to ruin my moment for. Now, has he left an edge? I think he has. I think he's just left a little edge. I think he can see the pointing angle. And there you see. Now, cue ball will be coming back and going towards the the nine ball and the eight. No, I don't believe he's playing it. Well, I'm shocked at that. I am shocked at that. And a slightly thicker kiss on the green six ball would have meant the five was available. The 
It was all plain sailing for Team Russia. Now this has got the feel of a very big rack indeed. Well, you can see this full ball. Can you play this round the angles? Oh, he's played this well. Purposely played. Lovely shot from Dimitri there. You had a few claps in there. Well, you know, we always say a knowledgeable crowd. Well, given that the crowd is made up solely of competitors, they should be knowledgeable. He's just got to try and get the hit here. Anything else would be a bonus. Foul shot. Of course, you don't get a hit. Leave ball in hand. So now, from nowhere, start the clock, please. Team Switzerland have got the cells back in the match. Who would have thought? And it all turned around when Gorsh thought he'd swerved to knock in a verbal five. It refused to drop, and ever since then, Switzerland have been firing. Should be okay, but after what happened with the nine ball earlier in the match, I'm loath to take anything for granted. Yeah, and it will be Ronald playing the nine ball, but surely he's not going to miss another one, Phil. Well, let's put it this way I'd be astounded. He doesn't miss. The Swiss. Look at this, they were 5-0 down at their lowest ebb. Now it's 5-4, this match is anyone's.
It's only day one, but already the World Cup of Pool is producing some really good storylines. What about this? Russia at 5-0. We were thinking whitewash. Right now, we're thinking, could Switzerland possibly pull off what would be one extraordinary comeback? Lots of balls being made on the break. Russia have had two runouts from the break. The Swiss just won. But the most important thing about the break is that because the Swiss won rack nine, right. they break off in the 10th. Rack 10, Switzerland to break. Trailing by four racks to five. Ronald likely to get the 10th rack underway. Let's not forget that easy nine ball he missed. Earlier on in the match, so he's gone through the motions so far. It's a dry break though, so Russia will be playing the first shot. Just shows you, Phil, if Ronald didn't miss the nine ball, it could be such a different match. To be honest, when he did that, I thought that was the beginning of the end for the Swiss. How incorrect was I? Extension, please. Just got a few little issues here. It's not an easy pot, and then the blue two is tied up with the brown seven. I think he's looking at this, trying to pot it in the center past the blue two, but it's very thin. the pot and he's not Fiddle. left Place anything Drop. easy Thanks. Please. There you see the blue toe on the right hand side of the table next to that brown seven. I think that's causing the problems. He's trying to play thin off this using the six ball as well. Pretty useful. Now, if you can see the edge of this, you're going to need good eyes. Kicking off the bottom rail. Needs a bit of luck. Now he has left the pot, but looks like the cue ball's running towards the, the red three ball. So there's still a little bit of work to do in this rack. Max now, eh? Fantastic, huh? Five seconds. Yeah, didn't play the pot, but where's the one ball? Where is the one ball? Wow. So the philosophical question, Carl, when is a fluke not a fluke? There. Yeah, he put so much effort into trying to get a good cue ball, he forgot. 
the line where one ball was going, so he kind of jumped over the... Well, I'll tell you what, it's a good jump shot. Needs a little bit of luck. And he has got it. Truck. Restart the clock, please. Thanks. But Marcel just wants to throw that chalk across the room, doesn't he? Every time Dimitri's at the table, he's got to keep reminding him. So Fedor's playing this ball down into the corner. So is that self-imposed hook going to turn the match back? in the direction of Russia. Yeah, this shot to get back over the, for the purple five needs to make sure he doesn't leave his partner straight. Straight would cause problems. That looks pretty straight. So he's either going to have to... You know, you see he's either going to have to take his medicine and leave Fedor just a shot on the six, or... Is he going to try and cheat the pocket? I think he should just take his medicine and... play it like that. Leave your partner a shot on the next ball. Big shot coming up. And if there's one man in the room who you want playing it, it is the current world champion. Five seconds. You can hear the voice of John Lehman, the referee, who's the marker for this one, calling out five seconds left, and he has to do that precisely on the five-second mark. So on a couple of occasions, his voice is actually boomed out when the players are on their backswing. Thankfully, hasn't distracted them. It's only the equivalent of the electronic beeps going off. So it's a big rack. Just to settle the ship and Russia will get on the hill with its nine. Ball. Russia. There it is, a bit of breathing space from the boys. They was winning this match 5-0. Things started to get a little bit edgy. And it all revolved around Ronald Regley trying to lay that awkward snooker. He did so. The only problem was, off a couple of cushions, the one ball found its way into the top left-hand pocket. And then poor old Dimitri Youngo had to try and tidy up. He played a, a pretty good jump shot, but not good enough. That's the jump shot in question. But he didn't quite get away with it. Yeah, it's a good effort, really. He did well to even get the cue ball over the three. However, I'm sure at 5-0 down, they would have snapped your hands off to be sat there trailing 6-4, so got to try and be positive. Yes, the Russians will be very keen indeed to wrap this match up with this rack. The 11th frame. 
Russia to break. Leading by six racks to four. Well called, that's the way to sort out a break. Yeah, he's got a shot at the lowest ball. And you see Sergi just looking to see if this red three passes the six, the green six that is. If he does, I mean he can play for the three ball in the opposite corner as well, so. They've got options here, it's a chance, and it's a chance to win this match. the cue ball to miss the nine and it has so that's that's not bad that he's got a shot now and he can use he can use that green six to help him get position for his next ball which is the pink four ball up towards the left the winner of this match will play team japan extension please All about leaving the cue ball in a zone, Carla. Yeah, that was nicely done. Also a nice shot there from Sergi. Getting the cue ball back out into the middle of the table for his partner. away from the, the last 16. Minimal communication, just getting the message across. We're nearly there. Pretty good. Sergi Lutska's played very well in this match so far. Just the one little missed pot and Russia looked quite good. Of course, we all know who Fedor Ghost is. But at first glance, they look a pretty good team. On the eight, drop on the nine, and you can't imagine Gorscht failing. And I think they'll gain an awful lot from this, perhaps more so than had they completed the whitewash. They've passed a test of character. 
Russia once work. At 5 0 that... to Russia, it looked like a foregone conclusion. At 5 4, it was anyone's. But the Russians, Fedor Korsht and Sergei Lutska, do come through by a final score of 7 to 4.